A little over a year and a half ago, I reviewed a Frogger Mini arcade machine that used a segmented LCD display. It was cool, and while the gameplay was as good as it was going to get, ultimately, its small form factor led it to being shelf dressing. Well, TV dressing to be specific. I ended up with a small collection of them actually. I didn't feel it was worth creating individual videos for each of those since they're essentially the same thing, but I recently came across this version of Qbert that uses a proper LCD instead of that segmented nonsense. That's worth its own video, right? Surely. Here, the series is referred to as Arcade Classics, although it's produced by Basic Fun just like the others. This cost me 20 big ones from a store called The Reject Shop here in Australia. As you can probably imagine by the name, they primarily sell discontinued and discounted goods. They're a great place to buy cheap name brand shampoo. They didn't have any other games from the series, which is unfortunate since I really do suck at Qbert. Either way, you may remember this from an 8-bit guy video from around the same time as mine on Frogger. That dates its original release to sometime in late 2017. Straight up, this type of mini arcade comes in a box that's much easier to retain than the previous segment display series, which is great since this thing is no doubt destined to live out its life in that very box once I'm done actually playing it. Aesthetically speaking, it resembles the real deal to enough of a degree. It's not a one-for-one -one scale replica, I think all the games in this series have the same mould but different decals, but the decals are close enough even if a few liberties have been taken with the design. Otherwise, there is a four-way joystick on an angle as expected, a start button, and two more buttons for volume and power. Simple stuff. It does feel plasticky and cheap, but I feel this is expected for 20 bucks. This is not a premium product like the replicades from New Wave Toys that sell for $120. No, these are designed to be eye-catching in a retail environment and bought on impulse, and are priced as such. It's exactly what I did after all. Playing Qbert is what you'd expect. While not arcade perfect, it looks to be based on the NES ROM, it plays and sounds as it should. The one thing the other mini arcades had that this doesn't was the synthesized voice like the arcade original, although that display was crap so who cares. Since the mini arcade is so small however, it can be a bit difficult to use for serious gaming sessions, especially if you have big sausage fingers as I do. The joystick is unresponsive too. I suspect this is simply because it uses four digital buttons like its predecessor and resembles nowhere near the real thing. As I said before, I'm also incredibly bad at Qbert, so really, nothing was in my favour here. So, if you've seen that 8-bit guy video that I referenced before, you would have seen where he cracked open the centipede version and discovered that it shared the same circuit board as this. Simply shorting a jumper while turning on the device actually booted Qbert instead, so I was keen to see if my Qbert could in turn, play Centipede. Well, I cracked it open and discovered that the circuit board was likely a new revision. I can just make out in the 8-bit guy's video that his is dated to November 2016, while mine is March 2017. That's a shame, really, as I was planning on soldering in a switch for a bit of extra fun for this video so I could easily transfer between the two, but it is what it is. Ultimately, these sort of things are always better to display rather than actually play. It's just too small, which I get is the idea, but I found it uncomfortable to use and play. It's not like it's that hard to find other ways to play Qbert after all.